Sopra i quotidiani, legge nella storia tutto il mio dolore Canta la mia gente che non può morire Quando guardi il mondo senza aver problemi Cerca nelle cose l'essenzialità Non è colpa mia se la tua realtà Ti costringe a fare quella umanità Gerusalemme non è compresa negli accordi di Oslo, fige la divisione del 48 in cui metà appartiene a Israele, l'altra metà ai palestinesi. Per questo la decisione di Trump di spostare l'ambasciata qui a Gerusalemme ha creato tensione, ma Gerusalemme non può essere la capitale di Israele finché non diventerà capitale anche dello Stato di Palestina. A Gerusalemme Est si stanno spostando molte famiglie di israeliani, un atto coloniale perché non parliamo di sporadiche famiglie ma parliamo di un vero e proprio esodo, quindi un'espansione dello Stato di Israele. Queste famiglie protette dai militari israeliani abitano le case espropriate ai palestinesi, le occupano, questa è la tensione che si respira all'interno della parte palestinese della città di Gerusalemme. Questo tipo di espansione richiede tutto un sistema particolare di sicurezza, addirittura vedremo eh, bambini israeliani andare a scuola con la scorta armata. Qua siamo a Shijarra, a Gerusalemme Est e siamo proprio nella via in cui, che è diventata famosa nel 2021 per, per le proteste contro l'evacuazione di alcune famiglie palestinesi. Uh, I coloni israeliani hanno occupato tantissime case. Diciamo che la base per cui i, i coloni si sentono in diritto uh, di occupare queste case è una legge che è passata alla Knesset, il Parlamento israeliano negli anni 70 che dice che eh, gli israeliani possono rivendicare la proprietà di terreni che avevano ancora prima della creazione dello Stato di Israele. E su questa base, che per loro è legale, quando in realtà sappiamo che le colonie sono illegali secondo il diritto internazionale, perché non puoi spostare popolazione su un territorio occupato, si arrogano il diritto appunto di, di, di starci. Io abito qui da circa tre anni e lavoro in Palestina da circa sei. Ho lavorato per delle ONG italiane per il primo periodo e adesso lavoro per un'organizzazione internazionale. Che cos'è Osimo? Gli accordi di pace hanno fatto sì che si creasse l'autorità nazionale palestinese e che ha fatto sì che il territorio si dividesse in tre aree. Area A che sono le principali città palestinesi sotto controllo dell'autorità nazionale palestinese sia dal punto di vista civile che dal punto di vista della sicurezza. Zona B è una zona che dal punto di vista civile è governata dall'autorità palestinese ma dal punto di vista della sicurezza è sotto il controllo militare israeliano. L'area C, che è tra l'altro la maggior parte del territorio, che è considerata Palestina West Bank ma che è controllata sia civilmente che a livello di sicurezza militare dal, dall'esercito israeliano. La Convenzione di Ginevra che Israele ha ratificato vieta il trasferimento di popolazione civile della potenza occupante 
su territorio occupato. Quando è stata proposta la spartizione dei due territori, le Nazioni Unite hanno chiesto che Gerusalemme rimanesse un territorio a sé, neutrale, internazionalizzato e demilitarizzato. Gerusalemme Est è sempre stata pensata come un'eventuale capitale del dello Stato palestinese che ancora non, non esiste. E quindi quando Trump sposta l'ambasciata o quando Salvini propone di spostare l'ambasciata italiana a Gerusalemme? Una grandissima provocazione perché significa a tutti gli effetti riconoscere che Gerusalemme sia la capitale dello Stato israeliano, implicitamente dire che non esisterà mai uno Stato palestinese che non avrà mai diritto ad avere la sua capitale a Gerusalemme. Veramente questo tentativo di evacuazione va avanti da decenni, dieci anni che ogni venerdì ci sono delle manifestazioni pacifiche portate avanti da attivisti israeliani contro l'occupazione. Sheikh Jarrah è solo un esempio di, di questo processo di annessione di Gerusalemme ma ci sono tantissimi altri esempi che ti posso fare, per esempio Silwan. I'm exhausted. Last night I couldn't sleep, but when I did, I could hear bombs in my dreams. Nightmare situation. How could they be so evil? Making mortars out of children and innocent people. We expect the bombs, not knowing where next. Huddle in the corner of my room, trying to protect my little brother. As the building shakes. Okay. Hello, this is Manar. I'm from Jerusalem, Palestine. I uh, live in Jerusalem and I am a translator and a painter in a project called I Witness Sidwan. In Arabic, Ana Shahidun Ana Silwan. This project is a public art project. Uh, it is in support of the long standing fight against disposition here in Palestine, especially uh, in uh, the neighborhood of Silwan. These eyes are witnessing what the occupation forces has been and still doing to the Palestinians, and especially here in the neighborhood of Silwan, is to grab attention to the case of the people here in Silwan. In the Hawa neighborhood, we have over 87 houses with eviction notices. Art is a form of expression, and for Palestinians, it's, it's a little bit hard for us to express the way that we want in comparison to like other countries. When you get evicted, where you go? Exactly, this is the question. If you have nowhere else to go, so what's the solution? You have to fight, you have to defend yourself and your family and your house. Well, we have, we have no other options but to also to defend ourselves and stay here in our land. Sometimes they force you to demolish your own house. But then people... We're talking about ethnic cleansing, we're talking about... Um, yeah, so it's, it's, it's hard and complicated and we are really proud that we're doing something for our people. 
people first for our land. <laughs> I'm gonna be arrested today. <laughs> <laughs> Quindi qua siamo in Palestina e dall'altro lato c'è la Palestina. Esatto, qua siamo a okay. Gerusalemme Est e dall'altro lato è ancora Gerusalemme Est. La parte est è stata annessa di fatto, è comunque considerato territorio occupato, però è stata divisa da un muro, quindi ci sono comunità che vivono dall'altro lato del muro, che sono comunque a Gerusalemme, hanno la carta d'identità di Gerusalemme. Poi il muro in realtà avrebbe dovuto costruirsi intorno alla Green Line, quindi la linea di demarcazione, ma in vari punti della Cisgiordania comunque entra e incorpora colonie e pezzi di territorio palestinese. Ci troviamo in questo punto. Secondo Google, questa qui è la frontiera Cisgiordania-Israele. Noi ci troviamo qui. In realtà il muro passa lungo questa strada, quindi questa è quella che è la terra che apparterrebbe alla Palestina ma che effettivamente no. Adesso ci troviamo bloccati a un checkpoint, probabilmente hanno arrestato una ragazza con un coltello. Gerusalemme e Ramallah sono a 17 km normalmente, ci metteremo due ore. Niente, ci rigiriamo, non siamo riusciti ad entrare a Ramallah. Pare che una palestinese abbia cercato di accoltellare un soldato. C'è un video su Twitter che gira di un soldato che spara. Però non si vede nessun corpo né niente per adesso. Comunque il checkpoint è chiuso. Ci riproviamo, pare che è aperto. Andiamo a Ramallah. Giù c'è il checkpoint l'abbiamo passato ci troviamo in Cisgiordania Blu Okay, you born in the camp? Yes, no, me yes. At the camp established in 1950, they, they was living in a tent. Yeah. And then the UN and uh, helped them to build ho houses and now they live in homes. And we know here the Cape Breton 
It's a symbol for Palestinian refugees. Like in the Nakba, they close their home and take the keys with them. And Thinking, when they yeah. came there, there to the to the camp, they save the keys with them, and that's the, our symbol. Even Before they was, built the uh, apartheid the wall, the, the people in the camp they was go to Jerusalem just in five minutes, like from this. Uh, yeah. it's 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 and now we have the apartheid wall. We can kind of here inside the the camp. Life is normal, it's easy. No, it's not easy. They can we come take you any any yeah. time. We okay. don't have electricity and sometimes we don't have water for more than three weeks. So today we were taking Dabka lessons. As I said, it's a cultural yeah. dance. We the soldiers actually, course. they have a cage or something yeah. there. And they threw some some gas, gas. some gas, yes. tear gas at them and stuff. And we had many problems with gas. Uh, like in the past, uh, many people dead from the from the gas. Many people go to the hospital for many days. And this, every day, it's happening. Week, it's a normal month. day here in the yes. camp. Because the, the occupation yeah. is here. They arrest children, yes. women, grandmas, grandpas, everyone, yes. old people, young people, teens, everything. Literally throw tear gas on children. <laughs> We don't have uh, areas to, to plant, so we, we put the, the, uh, this like, in the rooftop in the camp to plant and to eat from our, uh, our products. Also here we put this to protect the, the, the plants from the tear gas. Uh, yeah, I think it's maybe. This is the tear gas canister which is they shot it a few days ago. They shot in less than a second over than 100 tear gas to all Ida residents. But after the attack and we lost all the vegetables, we pilled all this fence in a way to protect it from the next attack. If you go following there, like you can see some of the tear gas there, which is inside burning. And there is also there here, it's like some of the burning and the tear gas which is inside here. Mm -hmm. So it makes also fire when they shoot, it's not just uh, smoke. Uh, but don't touch your face. It's dangerous. Yes. L'hotel di Banks è The World Door, l'hotel con la vista peggiore al mondo. another new tunnel you know it goes through in the bottoms of Al Walaje village where Al Walaje now it's like really like in jail it's not West Bank it's not Jerusalem you know I was studying political science I was not finished because as normal every Palestinian youth being in Israel in jail so you are with terrorists you have to be careful you know the settlers start occupying different places here and there and there with the protections with the army. You know, and after two, three years, you'll see completely nothing here left. And everything is green here. It's really controlling or by 80% of our own water. Seventy percent of the territories under Israel control fully. All the colony you know, established in sea area. Hmm? We're supposed, the Israeli, to draw from B and C between 97 to 1999, before the final solution of Oslo, we're supposed to be in year 2000. But nothing 
happening. The EU, for example, is establishing a lot of things in sea area for the school, for small clinic, for our, and they usually come and destroy it. You know, and destroy many places like this. Huh? Two state solution was it's over, you man. still wait since no, 30 no, no, no. years. It's worse. No? <laughs> no, I mean, just like it's a bullshit. All play the game from the EU to the American to the Palestinian Authority to Israel, all playing the game. They know no deep inside it will not work anymore. Where? Where? Nothing left to talk about two state solution. They kill it. What Palestinian we are angry about? We are angry with the rest of the world. They never been fair to us. The idea of two state solution. You know, or the from where it come from Western country. It's not our side. Mm -hmm. We follow it. We accept it. Mm -hmm. Okay. We done everything what you want us. We accepting 22 percent of our historical land. It's your idea. Officially, Italy, France, Switzerland, everybody. You talk. This is an occupied territory. So how you allowed them to do all that changing? In front of your eyes, all this Amnesty International Organization, 104 decisions, you know, orders from the UN and from other international human rights organizations, no one, no one of this 104 decisions has been blind into the ground. So, they have to be practicing, doing something to them, tell them, listen, you can't do it. If you will do it, that's it, no cooperation. Hebron is the only city in the West Bank with the settlers living inside the city. They've been divided the Hebron city in two parts, what they call H1 and H2. It's mean Hebron 1 under Palestinian Authority, H2 under Israeli control. Adesso entriamo in H2 nella zona occupata. Non If anything have sharp with you, like knife, no. anything with these scissors, no. Anything, no? With all this humiliation. You know, imagine you go into your chairs at home and somebody stop you and then they can be tell you you're not allowed to go. This is where the massacre happened inside the door. Baruch is entering from the door at 4 o'clock in the morning. When the, the prayer started, he go upstairs. First thing what he been done, he shot and kill the Imam. For people continue praying. You know, he used the two bullets to shoot him from the back. He killed the 29 people and 300 injured. So they, and he closed the mosque. Six months later, the mosque was open. We found the mosque in the Bible. The massacre of uh, Baruch Goldstein, we've been the victim and we have to pay the price for it. After the massacre, they divide the mosque, they're closing the Martha Street completely. They're putting different rooms in the area of Palestinian, they're not allowed to move with the cars and all that things. They're putting these things by the wall in this area and there, in the different areas that people cannot even to move. They make more pressure on them to leave. But the whole idea, they want to completely control in H2. You know what I mean? Under the own side. Where are we now? This place is Tal Romeda. 
Talmud is one of the oldest spots in, in Palestine and in Hebron. And we are in our garden. To my right is a Palestinian land occupied by the Israeli settlers. There is a soldier just uh, 10 meters from here and Israeli settlement to our side. And this place is uh, protecting this Palestinian land from the Israeli settlement's expansion. So it's a really important place where we are sitting now. Okay. This place was a Palestinian house owned by a Palestinian family. Uh, the family had to leave the house in 2000, 2001 because of the continuous harassment, stones, Molotov cocktail. So soldiers used the house as a military base. Then soldiers left, settlers moved in to occupy it. I saw that. I was an activist here. I talked to the owner. The owner told me he's afraid to come because settlers may shoot him, they may shoot his kids. I told him, I'm a person who's ready to resist. So I took the house from the Palestinian owner. I opened it for the area to be a community center, to be a non-violence activity center. So the house now is a, you know, you can see a hub. After Oslo 1994, an Israeli military commander went into the Ibrahimi mosque, killed 29 Palestinians, and 100 were injured. And the result of that massacre was the closure of the city. And that agreement talked about that this division will be for only two years until the two-state solution. We have around 1,800 shops closed because of the closure policy. Around 1,000 Palestinian apartments became empty in H2. There is a big struggle about the Palestinian identity of of H2, we try to keep it and they try to make it a part of Israel and, and we try to resist that. You can see the soldiers be behind us and they it's want really to take it over. To yeah, they are here, you know, they are just uh, behind us. Yeah. Um, yes, yes. So Hebron is a H2 in Hebron, it's a Palestinian, uh, full of Palestinians. Only a few hundred settlers living in uh, uh, H2 in Hebron and uh, uh, thousands of Palestinians are living here. And we as Palestinians, we are under the Israeli military law. And the Israeli settlers just you know, next to us are under the Israeli uh, civilian law. So we have two sets of law in the same area for different people. This is why Amnesty, Human Rights Watch, B'Tselem described what is happening in West Bank and especially in Hebron as apartheid. So look, I have fence here to protect me from the Israeli settlers. The windows are fenced, the doors are strengthened. In the markets you have net to protect the Palestinian customers and the shopkeepers from the Israeli settler stones, uh, rubbish, empty bottle, liquids, they throw everything down. They don't evict you directly from your home, but they make it impossible for you to stay and remain and live a normal life with basic needs. <laughs>